expanded customization, desync fixes, and a BTB community playlist? Well, I answer those questions and a lot more within this video. So stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. And also, did you know that 78% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel? If you want to stay updated with everything going on with Halo, make sure you tap subscribe and let's get right into it. Doc asks, similar to the community playlist we have now for Arena, is there a chance we'll get a community BTB playlist with hopefully more traditional vehicle spawns? I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a BTB community playlist sometime within Halo of its lifespan, if not even this year. The lead Forge dev at 343 Michael Shore recently mentioned about how how long it actually takes for a map to actually be vetted by 343. Thanks to today's sponsor, Into the AM. Into the AM are a team of artists and creators who share a common vision. They see clothing as a canvas to express what drives you. Since 2012, they developed premium apparel that elevates self-expression and provides unparalleled comfort for wherever your passions take you. Into the AM recently sent me some apparel to check out and honestly guys, I'm really enjoying this stuff. I like the art style they put on the shirts and I also got some cool joggers that go with it that fit me really well. If you're not into all the crazy styles, don't worry, they have some simple tees for you as well. They fit great, they feel great, and I genuinely do enjoy their products. If you use my code KevinCollects, you receive an additional 10% off of your purchase. Plus, I get a little kickback and help support the channel as well. Into the AM has been a long time sponsoring the channel, and I genuinely do enjoy their products a lot. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you much Into the AM for sponsoring the video. So let's get right back into those details. Talking about this here on Twitter, a great Forger, Dark Mamie, and if you guys don't know who he is, definitely go give him a follow. He definitely does amazing stuff with Forge. He created this really cool looking big team battle map, and someone actually asked him saying like, what's the realistic turnaround of these community Forge maps coming into a playlist? If Michael Shore actually did say, saying it's complex, but right now the best turnaround we've seen is around eight weeks. This includes finding content, assessing its viability, reaching out to the authors, providing feedback, getting map updates, play testing further, doing QA passes, and then ingesting into the live game. And we know 343 really tried to get a Forge playlist into Halo Infinite for the winter update. Making the maps, of course, is very, very hard, but then getting them out to that next level where they're now ready for official we tried Play to get it in. We tried to get a playlist in before the end of the year. You did. Absolutely. You, we had, you, you did. You did. I worked as hard as I possibly could to get that going. It is not trivial, especially if we want to do it in a way that is that that 90% level yep. of what I'm talking about. Yep. Like, right? Like, we don't want it to be a bad experience but it needs to be the right experience. So like, we're just going to wait. We didn't get the community playlist until early February. Though I wouldn't be surprised if we do get a BTB community playlist or BTB maps that are from the community added into the BTB playlist for say like season four that comes around to the end of June. Now I haven't delved too much into BTB community maps just because I like to play multiplayer game progression when it comes to the battle pass. And I'm not sure within Forge if it's difficult to make that Pelican drop mechanic that's in the vanilla BTB maps available for Forge because that's a fundamental design decision by 3-4 three if you want to maintain that same type of experience through say a community playlist I'm not sure if that option is available. So we'd have to use much more traditional spawning methods like we've seen in classic Halo games like you mentioned within Halo 3. Which personally, I would like to see a lot more just because it could be so rare to get some of the more fun vehicles in the game. I mean, heck, I uploaded a BTB gameplay right here because I got a tank within it and I felt that was upload worthy enough for how rare of an occasion that is. <gasps> Do my eyes deceive me or do I see a full-blown tank available for me to jump in? Oh my god. Spartan RXB says, when can we see server infrastructure and desync fixes that actually respectfully fix server crashes and help players out of NA? I really don't know if we'll see any type of improvements that will be anything better than what we have right now. Yes, things can be better. And I'm sure some changes over time will happen, but I'm not expecting some kind of overnight big fix of like, hey, the desync and the lag or anything else has been completely fixed. I've never actually experienced what true desync is, where you're, what's happening on the server is not happening with what you're seeing kind of thing. I've certainly been shot around corners, but that's more lag compensation, not actually desync. And that's a fundamental design decision that 343 made when it comes to the networking of Halo Infinite. They 
mentioned this in a blog. In this blog, I did a great example of showcasing what the difference is between lag compensation and actual desync. Here they actually explain what lag compensation is saying from a shooter's point of view, this is what you're going to see right here. And with zero milliseconds, they stand right there. But when you throw in 33 milliseconds, this is where your point of view is, but this is what that player who is shooting you is actually seeing. For a more extreme example, here's what 150 millisecond ping looks like, where if you're, if you're on 150 millisecond ping, this is what you're seeing, but then once your shooter is seen, is seeing this. And the way they networked Halo Infinite is so, so then the shooter gets favored within the situation. So what you're playing is more rewarding. So the person being shot, is at a bit of a disadvantage. Sounds terrible, but this is general networking when it comes to online gaming. Someone's gonna get screwed over. And this is rather industry standard type of networking as well. So being shot around a corner, that's just lag coming into play. That's something that's always been in online gaming, especially with shooters. So I don't really see that changing much. When it comes to actual desync, we have seen a lot of fixes happen. I personally have never experienced actual desync, and I've certainly seen the clips of actual desync decrease over the time Halo Infinite has been out. And for the most part, server stability seems pretty good. I don't generally lag out of matches or servers ever crash. It might be like one in every 100, maybe even 200, 300. I'm not quite sure because it happens so rarely for me at least. I don't really notice it. And I can only speak on my experience when it comes to this stuff because for me, it's working as intended. So I can't really show or talk about any examples of where it's not working as intended. So your non-North American players who have a lower player base when it comes to people playing Halo, you'll come across more laggy matches with higher pings, meaning you'll be shot around corners more often. That's just kind of how online first person shooters have played out since about the 2010s was when I noticed when land compensation was a thing that was being created for those. This is basically just so then the person who has the lowest ping doesn't feel like an absolute legend. I remember those lobbies back in Black Ops 1 whenever I got host, I felt absolutely unstoppable. But that's because I was literally playing the game like a full moment before anybody else. And that is completely unfair. That's why we moved to dedicated servers. The Wither Lethal, if I pronounce it correctly, it says, Will there be any PvE mode like Firefight, maybe even like Spartan Ops? Yes, there will be PvE modes coming into Halo Infinite very soon, actually. Here's some leaked gameplay of what Extraction looks like. You can find it on YouTube here, and it seems like basically you grab an object that you can see right here, you bring it over to a location, plant the bomb kind of in a way, and let it do its thing, and then you kind of move on to the next one. So that's looking to be the kind of general gameplay flow. The current leaks and rumors are being that it's most likely going to release within Season 4, which is going to happen at the end of June. So definitely excited about this. The PvE is desperately needed within Halo, but it's not going to be the only PvE mode coming in. Our favorite leaky boy, Sir Asia here, recently tweeted this out with the mode Bastion, bashing PvE on the map Scar, whichever that map could be. And it looks to be much more of a King of the Hill type of mode. So maybe it might be like a crazy King kind of thing where you move from location to location. You have to hold it down and then basically you get attacked. That's kind of how it looks to be playing off. Now, it seems like you might be doing these on most likely either arena maps or BTB maps. You're not going to be getting any kind of unique maps for these unless you can forge them, which it might be the case. As we do know that currently 343 is working on campaign AI being added into Forge. And if that's the case, we could see some really cool stuff come. And of course, since it is a developing story when it comes to a PVE mode coming into Halo Infinite, most likely with season four, I'll keep you guys up to date here on the channel. Cranberry Dan says, do you think we'll ever get a more expensive array of customization options such as backpacks, maybe calf changes and things like that? I don't really expect to see additional customization options coming into Halo Infinite. I think they're struggling enough just to give what we have enough to do kind of thing. That's why 343 is working on cross core customization from last we've heard and that we've seen some contradictory things coming up within the store and stuff like that but i do know that they are currently working on cross-core customization of course that was mentioned what back before the release of season two and we haven't really heard much about it since i mean if 343 was going to ditch cross-core you probably would have heard about it by now now you probably might say well yeah they did it for mcc why can't they do it for halo infinite but mcc those games had 20 years of development time, you know, from the release of those games to all the patches that those games received over those years and the iterative development mechanics that 
Bungie put together where basically they just kind of kept building on top of the game rather than reinventing the wheel like 343 has been doing with all their titles. And I know that customization is a really important thing when it comes to Halo. We want to feel like it's our Spartan on the battlefield. Uh, personally, I don't really care too much. I care more about the gameplay, the guns, the maps, and things to do within the game. I don't really care a whole lot how my Spartan looks. Like, yeah, I've bought a few things within the store because I think they look kind of cool. But at this point, that enjoyment is kind of starting to wear off of me right now, where really I just kind of care more about having fun playing the game rather than how cool my Spartan looks. But I know people within the community have built their identities around their customization that they've had traditionally within Halo. I mean, how many people out there have their two-tone color scheme? They're like, that's me. I am a orange and blue Spartan. That's me. Though I would still say that the offerings that we have within Halo Infinite it's still better than what we had, say, within Halo 5, where all you could choose is just your body piece and helmet. And it's definitely the best looking armor since Reach, so I didn't really care much for Halo 4's customization, even though it was solid. And it's definitely the best looking customization we've ever had within the Halo franchise since Halo Reach, because I never really cared much about customizing my Spartan within Halo 4, because I didn't really care much for Halo 4's gameplay, and I didn't really care for how the armor looked. Though feature-wise, Halo 4's armor customization was really well done. But right now, I think they're just focusing on trying to keep Halo Infinite afloat through the store and also trying to get, bring in that cross core customization people have been desperately wanting for so long. Now this is actually the 52nd episode of the Q&A series so I really appreciate it. So you can watch one a week and have a year's worth of content effectively. And the last video we talked about, we talked about infection coming in possibly within season three, maybe the second half of the event, as well as a progression system coming in for Halo Infinite and what the recent news about that is. If you guys want to know more about it, check out this video right here. Thank you much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.